with the Mac Studio M3 Ultra were out for a while now, it's time to update the results and set expectations on how fast it will be able to process your large language models locally. So let's dig in. First, I'll show you where I got the data from. A major shout out to some odd code guy on local Llama, the local Llama Reddit, who has released a very nice comparison with his old Mac Studio Apple M2 Ultra with the new Apple M3 Ultra, both in the maximum memory configuration, 192 gigabytes versus 512 gigabytes. There's also this guy who shared, uh, Thomas UK888, who shared some uh, information about his Mac Studio M4 Max, which was useful in comparing that model. And of course, this thread, which shows the performance on Llama CPP on M3 Ultra now being included. In my previous video, this has not been filled in, but since the Mac has been released, now we have the data. And actually it is lower than M2 Ultra on some aspects. Let me explain and I'll go through this step by step. First of all, let's define so-called pre-fill and decode phases. If we look in the data which I have here, we have pre-fill tokens per second and decode tokens per second. These are two distinct phases of a prompt generation or prompt processing. And what it is, is the model in the prompt decode phase or prompt processing phase, it takes your prompt and understands it, converts it into a form which is usable for itself and then it's able to start generating token by token. This first phase, the pre-fill phase, is typically limited by the type of GPU performance you have. So if you have a better and faster GPU, it will be able to decode that faster. And that's where the M3 Ultra shines compared to the previous generation. In the prompt decode phase or the token generation phase, it will generate token by token and output them to you. But this is really constrained by memory bandwidth, which is similar on the M3 Ultra and the M2 Ultra. In these cases, both being 800 gigabytes per second. Now, this is even more or more constrained on the M4 Max with 546 or uh, 410 gigabytes per second. So basically, the performance which we ex like the theoretical maximum performance which, which we expect uh, to be generated in tokens per second which is calculated by taking this memory bandwidth in gigabytes per second dividing by the model size in gigabytes and there's also some additional things which i'll talk about later in this video but basically this is a rough first ex estimation as you see, will be lower on the M4 Max than on the M3 Ultra, simply due to the memory bandwidth. But it's exactly the same on the M2 Ultra and the M3 Ultra, because we're constrained by memory bandwidth. So how fast are we able to read the whole model, read it through, process it, and output that token? To give an example, here's how this, these two phases look like. So this is a short story by Sherlock Holmes. Now I send it to ChatGPT, notice this little dot. It blinked for a couple of seconds or for, for like maybe a second or so, and then it started generating. And as you see, away it goes. And this was the first phase. And when it starts generating, that's the second phase. Let's get a bit more into this data here. So we have the Mac model, the memory bandwidth, which we discussed already. Then we have a software. So there's different software, which does make a difference. And I think it's the deciding difference when this DeepSeq R1 result here, which we'll get to in a second. And then the model, model parameter size, the quantization, and the actual model size in gigabyte as it would go into the memory. Note there are some approximations and estimations which I've done, but these should be roughly correct. 
Finally, we have the measured prefill tokens per second and the decode tokens per second. As you see, these are quite high values, but these are also small models. Now, if we go to something like the DeepSeq R1671 billion parameter model, these drop significantly. Also note, these are only available on the Max Studio M3 Ultra because it needs a lot of memory, 404 gigabytes to load this particular model. Now, for prompt processing, this will go, so for the prefill phase, it will go to nine tokens per second. And for the decode tokens, it will go up to 6.2 tokens. And this is a bizarre little thing, because if you look at this, this is a 70 billion parameter model. And here we are very similar at 6.22 decode tokens per second, but we are at, the at 6.22 for the decode, same as on the DeepSeq R1, but we are much faster in the prefill token per second. So what's the reason and what happens then? The reason here is that this is a so-called mixture of experts model. So basically, of, out of the 671 billion parameters, at a single time there's only 37 billion of those parameters which are active. And this allows me to calculate the throughput in a different way. So the actual maximum throughput, theoretical maximum throughput on tokens for the LAMA 70 billion models in quant 8 is calculated as 10.67 and for this it should actually be even a bit higher because we are activating less parameters, 37 billion instead of 70 billion and also these are in quant 4 quantization. In fact, we reach much less of this theoretical maximum, but it's roughly on par with the 70 billion model which is quite interesting. But again, please note that there's two phases and it's really in the decode tokens and uh, decode phase where this approach with a mixture of experts works really well. But in the prefill phase, we go down to very slow numbers. Let's dive a bit into what this means in waiting times. So basically for the two phases, you will have a casual uh, user prompt, a power user document analysis in King James Bible, as an example for the length of a prompt we fill in. And then depending on the length and the model, you will have different waiting times. So we probably can all agree that 0.07 seconds is not really waiting, or 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.8. But then when it comes to DeepSeq R1, you are actually waiting for 11 seconds on this model to process a short prompt, like something like write a short poem about springtime in the style of Rumi. So this makes it much less interactive. Also on an aside, I'm aware that DeepSeq R1 is a thinking model so that it will actually generate many more tokens. Here we're just comparing the rough output tokens per second and not considering that it's a thinking model. I just want to give you a size, like an impression of what kind of size of model and what kind of performance you can expect. If you like the content so far, please consider subscribing to the channel. More videos like this are coming up. Thank you, this really helps. The power user would have longer prompts, maybe giving complex instructions for example, detailed output requirements and so on. So they would have maybe 500 tokens in the prompt. And here with Quen, we would wait about 1.9 seconds. With Llama 70 billion, about four seconds. And with DeepSeq, it's already in the one minute territory, as you see, 0 0.93. For a document analysis, where we would drop an entire document or maybe something like the short story which I demonstrated, or the story by uh, Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes, with Llama 7 billion parameters, we would wait 2.69 seconds, which is still quite decent, it's okay. With Gwen, it already starts to feel quite sluggish, 15.5 seconds, Llama goes up to half a minute. And now DeepSeq really goes up to seven minutes. So you would wait for seven minutes for it to analyze a document. 
And that's a very different experience than from what you're getting in the cloud. The reasons for that I will explain in a different video. Post a comment below if you want me to post this video sooner than later. For the King James Bible, and note this is a theoretical calculation here because we might not be able to fit that into the context, into the actual RAM of the Mac. For Lama, we would need 672 seconds, which translates to 11 minutes. For Quen, about 64 minutes or one hour. For Lama, 70 billion, we would be already at two hours. And DeepSeek would go to over 111,000 seconds or 30 hours. So it would need more than one day to just ingest the full Bible before it will output uh, the result to you. Note again, this is actually just a theoretical example. Probably you're not going to be able to put in a context length of 1 million tokens on the Mac Studio M3 Ultra. Now let's get into some comparisons for the pre-fill phase. That's where the Mac Studio M3 Ultra actually shines. If you look at it, it's faster than any other compar comparison in this chart. So we have the M2 Ultra and the M4 Max. The M4 Max, if you remember, again, is the alternative to the M3 Ultra. So you can have the new Mac Studio and M3 Max, M4 Max, sorry, and M3 Ultra configurations. And the M3 Ultra really shines in this pre-fill phase because it's able to access more memory bandwidth than the M4 Max and it also has more GPU cores so it can process the data which is parallelizable in a really fast way. If we look into the different model sizes there we um, are actually, so I had to drop some of the models because compar comparison data was not available but for uh, Quen and for um, Lama I could compare M2 Ultra and M3 Ultra for you. So you see that the M3 Ultra is faster. It's not, you know, magnitudes, times of magnitudes faster and not like 50% faster, but it's noticeably faster. I would say roughly 10%, 15% faster. And of course, with something like DeepSeek, you're only able to run it on the M3 Ultra. And there we have this very low value. On a side note, these results, the nine tokens per second, were taken from the results of some odd code guy. I have results of a different guy who used Apple MLX to run the model, and his prefill is at roughly 60 tokens per second which would, of course, bring down those waiting times significantly. In this case, you would not wait for days before pro processing a full King James Bible, and you would actually go down from roughly seven minutes on the document analysis to two minutes, something like that. So um, this discrepancy may be explained by Apple MLX being used in this case and Cobalt CPP. And this is a guess because he didn't post it, but this is something uh, worth noting and worth watching out for. Then as we get into the decode phase, so once we have analyzed the tokens, we get to these results. And this is what really surprised me because actually the M3 Ultra performs worse here and performs worse on every as compared to the M2 Ultra on every of every of these models which were compared and this holds true not only for some odd code guys analysis but also of this performance analysis of the Lama CPP team again if we go through the data and of what you can expect pretty pretty decent performance on the Lama 7 billion decode roughly in the ballpark area of 60 to 70 tokens per second 
of course, this also depends on context size, right? So the bigger your context, the slower you might expect your token generation speed to become. And the length of the output, of course, matters. Then we have the Quen uh, 32 billion decode, still at quite a um, decent performance of 8.69 or 8.85 tokens per second, depending on whether you're running on M2 Ultra or M3 Ultra. And then with Llama 70 billion, it drops down to 4.58. Now, most people would probably prefer 10-ish, somewhat like that, tokens per second output rate. 4.58 is roughly the speed we speak at. A bit more, actually, but that's it, it's still okay, the performance, but it already starts to feel a bit slow. And now here we have a surprise. That is that the DeepSeq is actually faster in decoding than the Llama. We already discussed that, though, because it's a mixture of experts' models, so less parameters are active at the same time, less computation needs to happen, and more importantly, less data needs to be shuffled to the GPU in order for the prompt to be processed. So on this part, for me, it's time to get to a kind of feedback on what I think about this. So if I would be choosing a Mac, I would probably still go for the M3 Ultra with 80 GPU, the Mac's 512 gigabyte model, simply because it would allow me to do several different things. I can use this DeepSeq R1, possibly in a kind of batch mode and run prompts through it at night or something like that. So it doesn't need to have to be fully interactive. Second, it will allow me in interactive modes, it will allow me to have faster results. And this is better because then it will feel less sluggish. It will start generating those responses faster. And finally, there's some interesting other stuff coming out. If you're really looking for a um, high-end solution, the RTX Pro 6000 uh, Blackwell is going to appear soon and it has a memory bandwidth of 1.6 terabytes per second. Now keep in mind this is only 96 gigabytes of GDDR7 versus 512 gigabytes on the Mac, but it will have a significantly higher memory bandwidth, allowing you to run smaller models with a much higher throughput. And also the prefill, the prompt pre-processing, will be much faster than uh, on the Mac because the, these GPUs have a lot of power in them. If you watch this far and are still interested in getting a Mac Studio set up with your very own LLM, I can recommend my own company, Zeitverstärker, which we're selling through another of my companies, by Zero, And this basically is a Mac Studio M3 Ultra 512 gigabyte LLM appliance. We will deliver a model of your choice set up on this device, rigged to your specifications. Reach out to me in the comments below if you want to find out more about this possibility. The price, of course, is higher than the Mac itself. So if you're happy to do it yourself, I will be sharing more instructions on this channel how to do it over time. Uh, but if you want a ready-to-go, fully packaged solution with support, with someone who's knowledgeable about LLMs and is able to tune the model to your requirements and set it up on the Mac as you need it, do reach out and consider visiting our shop. We're based in Germany and I'm going to share, but we ship internationally, and I'm going to share this link in the comments to this video. If you haven't done so far, please subscribe to the channel, give it, the video a thumbs up, it means a lot. Thank you for your continued support, have a wonderful day, and also share about your experience with the Mac Studio M3 Ultra. For me, the most important bit is to give honest information, manage expectations and share information with you. The Mac Studio M3 Ultra is not for everyone, but for the people who, where it's a good fit, it's a great fit. Enjoy and have a great day.